Hi guys, once again this is Sashank Fulagati and uh, I'd like to take this time to show you some of my post-processing techniques and multi-pass rendering. Um, right here what I have here is uh, a geometry shader actually that I implemented. Um, you can see that the original model airplane is being rendered in the very center of the screen and then in the geometry shader I'm taking each triangle used in that rendering process and making a basis out of the triangle's uh, um, edges and then uh, therefore offsetting the positions of those triangles um, by a certain amount away from the center. In addition to that, I'm uh, rotating the triangles in that basis um, provided by its own space. So you get sort of this explosion effect as each of the triangles break apart, separate, and spin out from the center. Um, I could have even have added even more triangles by uh, tessellating each piece further. Um, perhaps using the geometry shader to split triangles into multiple triangles before fed further down the pipeline or use DirectX 11 tessellation um, to further tessellate them. Uh, but of course I didn't actually have the hardware to do that so I left it at this. Um, in addition to this I have post-processing effects enabled. What I'm actually doing is rendering to a direct 3D D11 texture 2D object through a render target view and then using that same resource as a shader resource view in the next pass. And this allows me to render the whole scene onto a surface and do post-processing effects on that surface before rendering to the final back buffer. One thing that I'm doing here is uh, enabling this post-processing effect where um, when I render that surface to the back buffer, I am actually offsetting the coordinates in X and Y by sines and cosine waves so I can get this nice wavy blurry effect that it looks like I'm uh, traveling underwater. Um, that effect is actually animated, so even if I'm still, the sine waves and cosine waves um, are moving in the x and y directions, and it does actually look like I'm swimming through liquid. So that's a pretty cool effect, I feel, um, for certain levels of games. In addition to the post-processing effect, I have multi-pass rendering working um, with uh, shadow maps. Here, what I have here is a light, a shadow map light orbiting the camera, sorry, orbiting this cube uh, above a bigger cube underneath. And what's happening here is that I am taking in one pass um, the view of the scene from the perspective of the light and then using that and storing that into a depth buffer um, and marking uh, the points, uh, each pixel in that depth buffer of a, the, de the depth in which I can see it. Then I am uh, doing multi-pass rendering and in the second pass I am rendering normally um, onto uh, the intended buffer and uh, checking that depth before um, from the camera's light position. And if that depth for a particular pixel in that geometry is not visible by the light, I, know, I now know that I should hide it um, in shadow and therefore darken the pixels. So I'm doing that in a little bit of multi-pass rendering and you can see that I have perfect shadow maps um, working. There are a little bit of uh, um, inconsistencies because your shadow map shadow quality is dependent upon the resolution of the shadow map and the angle um, um, of the light with the object. Ideally you would want the light and the shadow and the object to be in relatively good proportional distances. Um, the worst case scenario would be a very low resolution shadow map with a very far away light and um, a very small object on a big surface. But you can see here the resolution of that shadow, you can still see the uh, kind of jagged edges on it. But I feel like this is a pretty good result for what I've gotten so far, and uh, I hope you like it. This has been a demonstration of my geometry shader, uh, post-processing and multi-pass rendering techniques. I hope you like it. Thank you very much.